Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Hamiza Mukta. Today we want to discuss about our topic on forensic investigations in construction. Okay, first of all, let's go through the definitions of the topic. So, what is forensic? Forensic is the applications of knowledge to questions related to civil and also criminal law. Forensic engineering is the applications of engineering principles and methodologies to answer questions of fact. For forensic engineering is actually essentially a failure analysis program for litigation support. The goal of this forensic engineering is to positively identify the sequence of event which leading to ultimate failure. So, forensic engineering is related to analysis of construction project which cause failure. Okay, forensic engineering definitions from the Latin word which mean public. This word is belong to court of law and it is pertaining to fitted for legal or public argumentations. Forensic engineering as well can be considered as science concern with relation between engineering and also law. Okay, let's go through a few examples of Failure in structure within Malaysia. Okay, so we can see from here both picture is the same. We have collapse of the third floor slab under constructions at Kuala Lumpur Central. This occur in 2011. This failure involved two workers which are injured. Another example is on bungalow renovations at section 7. This owner facing the risk of legal action because he not having the renovation permit from Sha'alam City Council under section 70 bracket 1 of Akta Parit Jalan dan Bangunan 1974. Okay, this collapse or failure of structure involve one worker die and five are critically injured when the concrete slab are collapsed. Okay, this is another example on the stadium at Terengganu in 2008. Okay, the first picture is the first collapse in 2008 due to the slabs. And then another picture is the collapse of scaffolding during the repair work. Occur in 2013 where the two workers are injured with broken legs. Okay, so this stadium in Terengganu have two times failure. Okay, and then we have collapse in 2009 at the Jaya Supermarket building in Petaling Jaya. This one is collapse during the renovations and upgrading work on the old building. 35 year old building, we need to renovate and then the collapse occur where the three worker die and two critically injured. Okay, another example is on Putrajaya Bridge. Okay, this is different cause of collapse where the retaining wall collapsed 
in setia wangsa land. Okay. We have the luxury hilltop bungalow that split into two after the 43 meter long height retaining wall a collapse. In this failure of structure occur in 2012 and involve Residents of 88 houses and also shop lots. Okay, another news is on the Meru and also NKVE interchange collapse where the nine workers injured and also car damage, passing car damage. Okay, how the Incident happens, we can hear it here where there were what sounded like two loud explosions, then the two sections. Okay, this is the cause of box girder bridge sections collapse during the construction works. Okay, another collapse happened due to the roof. In the multi-purpose hall of Sekolah Menengah Sain Sultan Ahmad Shah in Kuantan. Okay, what happened is that the aluminium structure and the roof tiles uh, came down at night. Okay, another stadium in Negeri Sembilan also uh, facing roof collapse where the Indonesian worker are killed in the stadium roof collapse. And another four had serious injury. Okay, what caused the collapse is where the steel roof structure for the bowling stadium under construction collapse. Okay, this structure collapse is involved the steel. Okay, another picture of the bridge collapse, the bridge under construction. Another new related to bridge collapse is second bridge of Penang. Okay, Pulau Penang second bridge. Okay, this is the structure how the cracking in bridge cross hit. Okay, you can see here is the bridge and the cracks is occur at the center of the bridge. Okay, another famous structure failure in Malaysia. We have the incidents of Highland Tower, which involve the collapse of luxury apartment building in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, and then we go through the general goals why we really need to do the forensic in engineering investigation. Firstly, we need to know or determine the cause of failure. Most commonly desired information, we need to collect the information that caused the failure. And then, of course, we need to compare the statement by the witness or injured parties with physical evidence. And then to ascertain whether an illegal or improper activity was causative. And also to assess the damage to materials, products or structure. And lastly, we, need, we can evaluate the repair estimation cost and time based on the investigations. Okay, forensic engineering is considered as multidisciplinary process. Why? Because during investigating and reporting the cause of these engineering problems, we need or we may have legal ramifications. And it involves many uh, engineering process or many field of engineering. We have related to civil, 
or maybe related to structural, geotechnical, or maybe involve mechanical, metallurgicals, or maybe due to the low material use, or industrials, maybe due to the chemical effects, or other engineering fields. That's why this forensic engineering investigation is as act as multidisciplinary process. Okay, we go through who are the clients. We have owner, the developer, and also the tenant, or maybe public and government agency. Contractor also can act, can act as client. And then we have designer, materials, manufacturers, attorneys, insurance companies, plaintiff in litigations under the injured parties as well as defendant in litigations which involve design, construction, maintenance or operation. Okay, some activity or several activity in forensic engineering investigations. Firstly, of course, we need to gather related information on the case. And then we do a few investigation to determine the factor of failures. And then we need to go to the site for visual inspections. After that, of course, we need to come up with the evidence and document review. We need to have photographic documentation. This is also important. We need to really know uh, the correct angles for the proof and evidence based on the photo. And then we have code, industry standard and products research, followed by analysis of the data and in gathered information. And then we need to map the actions of parties who need to take the actions. Okay, this involves developments of opinions and also conclusions. And then we need to able to explain the reasoning factor behind the conclusion that we made. Prepare culpability worksheets. We need to assist the attorneys. Give a clear assessment of the risk involved with each issue for the failure structure. And then give expert witness testimony. Okay, forensic civil and structural engineering, where the engineering investigations and determination of the cause of the structure failure of buildings, or maybe bridge and other constructor, constructed facilities. Okay, after that, rendering opinions and giving testimony in judicial proceedings okay so we can determine the problem statement based on Robert Rathe in the books in 2000 they said that structure failure are not just accident it must be due to the oversight or carelessness or ignorance or greed of the parties Okay, with the relevance of design, sophistications, and construction methodology came the proliferation of structure failures. Okay, maybe uh, early saving in design. We need to saving the construction costs. Often boomerang as later and larger cost of repair and litigations. So when we need to save money for the construction, we need to bear the cost of repair and litigation later on. The vulnerable structure of the late 20th century actually will provide bread and butter to the latest forensic engineering in this 21st century. Okay. 